Do you love a delicious pouty pinwheel sandwich? Today I'm going to share my top three tips for making the best tortilla pinwheels. They're a perfect appetizer, they're easy to prepare ahead of time, and they're sure to be a crowd pleaser. Let's get straight into it and look at the ingredients we're going to use today. For the first pinwheel we're making I've got some caramelized onion wraps, leafy salad greens, sliced salami, cheese slices, a fresh tomato, cream cheese, and an onion dip. There are endless options for the ingredients you can use in your wraps. Choose the fillings you love and have on hand. Hopefully what I've chosen will illustrate the tips I'd like to share with you. First I'm going to thinly slice the tomato. The thinner you can slice it, the easier it will be to roll up the wrap. Always make sure you cut it this way with the core at the back. It keeps the central seeds intact. If you cut it sideways, they tend to fall out. Next I'm going to mix a little cream cheese and onion dip. I've made sure my cream cheese is at room temperature so that it's soft and easy to combine these together. This adds a lot of flavour to the pinwheel and also acts as glue to hold the tortilla shut when it's rolled up. Right, let's get out a wrap. I like to use a pizza wheel to cut a slither off the two side edges. For me this works best but stick around and I'll show you why soon. The next wrap will illustrate this better. The tendency when making wraps is to completely fill them, but it's not the best idea. I'm going to show you why. I've started with a layer of cream cheese spread. This adds a lovely flavour to the wrap. Then I'm adding some salami slices. You can add any meat or vegetable fillings in here, but I've chosen these in particular to show you how colour contrast can add to the visual appeal. Next is the cheese slices. This is a cheddar cheese. I love the vibrant yellow it brings to the wrap. I've put it between the salami and tomato to break up their similar red colours. Lastly, I'm going to add some leafy salad greens. Isn't that just what we need? A pop of green? Our wrap is full. Let's roll it up. This is the trouble with fully filling your wrap. As you roll it up, the filling slides along too. Then, when you get to the end, half of it has slid right out. I know we can do so much better than this, so let's do it again. Tip number one for making delicious pouty pinwheels, don't cover the whole wrap with layered fillings. I'm going to make sure I have the cream cheese mixture completely coating the wrap. This makes the edge a bit sticky so it won't flap around when it's cut. You can either fill the wrap with layers like I'm doing here, or you can fill it in strips depending on what look you're going for. I'll show you the strips on another wrap soon. I'm also leaving a good gap at the end of the wrap. Enough room for the ingredients to slide a little bit, and enough wrap to stick shut at the end. When you roll it, try to get it as tight as possible. Tuck in the first bit and gently and slowly roll it up. Look at that! It looks so much better than the previous one that was overfilled, doesn't it? Now we need to pop it in the fridge for a bit so the cream cheese can firm up and set before we cut it. You can make these a few hours before you need them, or even just refrigerate them for 10 to 15 minutes. It makes cutting them a whole lot easier. Next we'll make some shredded chicken wraps. I've got some tortillas, salad greens, shredded chicken, caramelised red onion, fresh pineapple, cream cheese and an onion dip. This method must be the easiest way for making tortilla pinwheels. You just put all your filling components together so that you have a tasty filling. Then spread it on and roll it up. It pays to think about the flavours you're putting together and also the colours that will be visible. This looks like a lot of chicken so I'll just add a bit first and make sure it's completely mixed through. I don't want any lumps of cream cheese or any lumps of dry chicken. 
it looks like it will take some more. I usually make these without much of a plan, just using what I have on hand. This is why adding the ingredients one by one is helpful, because you can see what the filling looks like and what else might add to it. Now I'll add the onion. This is a bit of contrasting colour to the chicken and a complementary flavour to the tortillas since they are also caramelised onion flavoured. Adding some fresh pineapple to this mix will add a lovely sweetness to the filling. I find using a serrated bread knife is a great way to cut the pineapple. I'm sure you know when peeling it, it's best to cut each piece behind the eye, otherwise you end up with chewy bits. It's also best to cut out the stringy core piece. If you want to see how to peel and prepare a whole pineapple in more detail, I'll leave a link in the description to a video about arranging a fruit platter, where I go over it in more detail. I'm dicing the pineapple into fairly small pieces. If you put big chunky pieces in, they can break a hole in your wrap when you roll it up. Now it's time to add the pineapple and mix it completely through. Tip number two for making delicious pinwheel sandwiches is to cut the edges off before you fill them. For this wrap, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't cut off the edges first. We've got a nice layer of the filling and I'm going to add some leafy salad greens for extra colour. Then we can roll it up. Can you see how hollow the end is? You're always going to have this problem when using a full circular wrap because you automatically have more bulk in the middle. When you come to trimming off the edges, you have this piece of wastage or a sample for the cook. It's okay if you're only making a couple, but if you're making a whole lot of these, you end up with a lot of wastage. Now I'll show you what it's like when you cut the edges off first. There isn't really a right or wrong approach, but my preference is to cut the two side edges off first. Without any filling residue on these offcuts, you can turn them into crispy chips by baking them briefly in the oven. Can you see what we're missing here? The filling hasn't made it all the way to the edge, so there's nothing to stick the wrap together. I'm going to add some cream cheese to act as a glue. Here's our leafy salad greens to scatter over for a bit of colour. Colour plays a big part in helping your food look fresh and appealing. This is definitely the easiest way to fill a wrap. With a sticky all-in-one filling mix, you don't have to worry about the filling sliding out on you. Look at this nice edge. It's clean and full enough that we don't need to trim it off, meaning there's no more wastage. I'll pop this in the fridge to firm up a little and we'll cut it soon. Our next pinwheel filling is pulled lamb. I've got some tortillas, mixed salad greens, pulled lamb, cream cheese, sun-dried tomato pesto, feta cheese, and some caramelised red onion. The first thing I'm going to do is make the spreadable mix. Cream cheese and sun-dried tomato pesto is so delicious. This is a homemade pesto. It's so easy to make pestos and they can add so much flavour to food. The recipe for this one is in my latest newsletter, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. There's a link in the description below. I'm going to spread it generously all over my trimmed wrap. For this filling, I'm going to add the different ingredients in thin strips. It looks a little different when it's rolled up. I'll show you the difference when we've got them all cut. Making wraps with leftover roast meats is a great way to use up leftovers in a convenient way for lunch the next day. Tip number three for making delicious pinwheel wraps is to think about the layering technique you're going for. Do you want to add a full layer of each ingredient on top of one another, creating a spiral appearance when cut? Or are you going to add the ingredients in thin strips along the wrap, creating sections of each ingredient when it's cut? Yum! This looks so delicious! I'm going to sprinkle the feta all over to disperse the flavours since the colour won't really stand out in such a small quantity. 
let's roll this up and pop it in the fridge too. It's time to cut our delicious pinwheel tortilla wraps. Let's start with the chicken wrap. I'm cutting it into six pieces today. For me, it's easier to get equal pieces by cutting the roll in half and then into thirds rather than piece by piece from one end to the other. If I do that, they all end up different sizes. Yum! Don't they look delicious? When you plate these, you can put the joins of the two pieces together to keep them tidy. It also looks better to put the outer edge side down on the plate. This creates continuity with the piece next to it. Next we'll cut the salami wrap. This one is a bit thicker since all the fillings are layered on top of each other. Oh, I love how they've turned out. The colours look so good together. I've put the chicken pinwheels in the middle because it's the lightest in colour of the three different pinwheels and creates contrast with the darker salami and lamb on either side. On to the lamb pinwheel. Sometimes your knife might get a bit of residue on it when you're making several cuts. If it does, you can wipe it with some paper towel every now and again and you'll get a much cleaner cut and tidier looking pinwheels. This little piece of lamb poking out here is going to stop this piece sitting nice and flat, so I'm going to trim it off now. See how there's a bunch of lamb in the centre of these? And notice how it looks quite different to the layered salami pinwheels. This is because we've filled it in strips. You can choose to fill your pinwheels in layers or in strips, or a combination of both based on your preference. What a lovely assortment of pouty pinwheels this is. There's such a nice pop of colour, and I'm sure it will be a well-received appetizer for any occasion. If you like this video, you might want to have a look at this one too. I'll show you how easy it is to make your own tortilla wraps from scratch. It's easier than you think. See you over there.